welcome to the Coronation Street Collection, a video library featuring the best bits of street history and everyone's favourite characters. We've selected some classic moments from Granada's vaults, crammed with over 30 years of archive tapes. In this particular trip down memory lane, we're stopping off at number 13, where one extraordinary couple lived for 20 years, the inimitable Stan and Hilda Ogden. Looked down on by the other residents for being idle and ignorant, they were loved by the rest of us, chiefly for their ability to make us laugh. Their quick-fire repartee, the put-downs, the classic one-liners, and, of course, Hilda's wonderful voice. Beautiful dreamer, wake on to me. Starlight and dewdrops are waiting for thee. Sounds of the rude world heard in the day. Lulled in the moonlight and all passed away. They are. What do you think of that, then? No, nope, perfect. Never mind what I think. The driver of the 34 bus down Bessie Street, when he heard your cat a warning, he swerved into the Dixon's fish shop. Ooh, by the heck, I'll tell you one thing. Me learning to play the piano's brought a lot of comedians out from behind the skirting board. You're no more learning the piano than I'm learning to fly. No, well, you're right there. No chance of you ever flying. There isn't an aeroplane big enough to carry you. Where's my dinner? There isn't any. If I can live on my music, you can live on your fat. Well, we may recall Hilda's singing with warm affection, but Stan wasn't the only one who objected. Younger than springtime, am I? Gayer than laughter, am I? la da 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 It just sounded to me like somebody was trying to strangle a cat through a mango. Sucky devil. <laughs> Hilda! Will you stop making that row? Like a lump of coke stuck under the back gate. Leave her be, Fred. She's happy. Happy? What right has she to be happy? She's been wed to Stanley for 40 years and she's still outside the loony bin. Oh, only just. Wed to Stan. 40 years and him about as much use and comfort to her as a gumboil. And she's singing. Hilda, belt up, Chuck. There's a good one. The toast. Is friendship. Mm. Friendship. That's what this evening is all about. Yeah. Friendship and harmony. Friendship and friendship harmony. Friendship and harmony. Friendship and harmony. Yes. <laughs> Feelings. Oh. Feelings. <laughs> la da 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 dee dee. Hilda. Shut up. Poor Hilda. She really had to suffer for her art. Stan had an art as well, and he practised it every lunchtime and every evening in the Rover's Return. Ah, incredible, isn't it? You know, whenever I drink alcohol, in any quantities anyway, it leaves little pockets of gel ignite throughout my entire system, and they go on exploding at intervals for days. You know your mistake, don't you? I wish you'd tell us, Stan. I'm as bad as Ken. In fact, I'm worse. I must be the only bloke in creation who feels completely disorientated after a couple of shandies. And what's the secret, Stan? I've done my share of boozing, but phew, I'm not in your league. You only play at it. I mean, taking the serious business, you know, you've got to keep at it. It's like training for a football match or something like that. You must keep at it. And when you're match fit, <laughs> no danger. Well, Stan's passion for beer caused frequent marital rows. When it seemed that he disappeared off the face of the earth, Hilda always knew where she could find him. Yes, the rover's return. He came up with some good excuses in his time, but Hilda proved more than his match. Put the pint in there, love. He's not having any. Look, will one of you two make his mind up? Is he having another pint or not? Of course I am. Oh, no, you're not. You said you was just having the one pint, and then you was going to get them windows in Kitchener Street polished off before your dinner. Now, then, with your very words, now... Just going to wet your whistle, you said. Well, I haven't wet it yet, have I? Ooh. You don't just wet it, do you? You blooming well drown it. Have you both finished? Look, give the half in there. Is that all right? An half. All right, then. And I'll have the other half. Just eh? smarter than you, Aston. Oh, you only just found that out. <laughs> Although words never seem to fail, Hilda, she often got them ever so slightly, but ever so hilariously, wrong. Of course, royalty has aquariums to do it for them. <sighs> I don't know how you do it. In my 30 flipping years, I don't know how you do it. Don't you? No, I don't. Oh. You don't know how to do what? Muck about with the Queen's English. Who says I She would if she could hear you. Specificate. Eh? Name an example. Aquarium. That's the thing he put fish in, not what royalty have. Well, how do you know they don't? I bet you they've got little goldfishes in bowls all over the shop. They might have killer whales in a fish pond, but that wasn't the word you were after, was it? Well, what was? 
Equerries. That's what's in the palace, looking after things, telling what sandwiches to make and what tiara to wear. Equerries. But they wear white gloves, you know. I don't care if they wear their flipping birthday suits. I haven't rotten got one. Hilda and Stan were always in total agreement about one thing. In their life together, they'd never had any good luck. Look at how they met. It was during the Second World War when Hilda tripped over an inebriated Stan in the blackout. Only six days later, they were married. The morning after their wedding, Stan was arrested by the military police for overstaying his leave. It's the sort of luck that would bedevil them for the rest of their marriage. Twenty-one years later, in 1964, they bought number 13, would you believe, for £550 and moved in with their children. Work was always to be elusive for Stan, but soon he landed a job as a chauffeur to the chairman of a large company. Well, it's his first day. Oh, it never is. In uniform, it is. Right, tie. Oh. On the chair over your jacket. It's all right. Okay. I should just think so, I know. Ah, well, your mother's fingers have got blacking on, you see. Oh, pardon me, my mistake. I noticed she didn't mind it on your toast. Hey, that's another thing too, isn't it? What, love? I'm going to need a new shirt, a white shirt every day, aren't I? How many have I got? You're looking at it. Yeah. It's all right, Chuck. I'll buy you a couple at market and then I'll wash Wednesday. <laughs> oh, you mucky poor. Well, First day or not, you've spilled tea all down you. It doesn't come out, you know. Oh, get away. That's all right. Look, it's only tomato sauce. That's all right. <laughs> it's better than dry cleaning. Right. Get your jacket on and your cap and let's have a look at you. Uh, no, not in front of me, if you don't mind. Why? You know what I'm like when I get the giggles, I'm good for now all day. Oh, well that just shows your ignorance, doesn't it? It can carry off your uniform, can you, Dad? Got the figure for it. Ah, you've got to have a bill, know how to carry it. I mean, especially with that car. I mean, it's just a Rolls Bentley, you know? Right, that does it. I'll finish off in the kitchen. <laughs> you've got no soul, that's your trouble. It's only a blooming motor car. Right, just for that, you're going to ride in it, <laughs> little heathen. Oh, Dad, you fly thing. Go on, let's have a... Oh. Well, worth putting a bit of marmalade on his toast for, isn't it? Oh, you're a lovely lobster, Magdalene. <laughs> a week later, he was out of work again. Workshy Stan could never keep a job, and he would eventually settle for the life of a window cleaner. For a while, though, he worked as a labourer for his drinking mates, Len Fairclough and Ray Langton, at their builder's yard. He desperately wanted to prove his worth, and he was very disappointed when they wouldn't allow him to fit a serving hatch. I'm not taking this line down. Where's my fags? Well, look, couldn't you just try it with a gun? Where's my flipping fags? Well, I'll get an ulcer on this, I'll tell you. I'll get a flipping ulcer. Couldn't you? Couldn't I what? Well, they think that you can't make a hatch. Why don't you show them that you can? I've told you, Langton's collared the job. Oh, you are a silly man. I mean, another one. What? Well, then you could make one in the house. You mean, they bring the food from the kitchen to the lab? You mean, bring food to? Yes. I'm not hearing things, am I? It's Dan Ogden doing the box. <laughs> it's while the cat's away, that's for certain. Listen, this hat is mine. The print of Fennecup and Flippin' Lachton are as good as they are. How are you, though? Look, Mrs. Corbett, something's worrying you, isn't it? Well... Come on, where is it? Well, I didn't realise what a big job it was. Look, I'll do it, old bust. I'll flipping do it. But she does live here, though. Who does? Oh, Mrs. Ogden. Of course she does. He was a lot of bust. A man must have his pride. Oh, yes, and so must a woman uh, in her house. It'll be the talk of the neighbourhood, will this? When I finish this job, I'll be known for it. Yes, I think you might be. Oh, I know what's going on. You do? Only oh, I don't think I should say. It's supposed to be a surprise, I think. <sighs> That's it! I'm going to have words with that man. Would you mind the shop a minute? What in the name? I'm nearly through now. Nearly through what? The wall, yeah. You're knocking it down. It's good, isn't it? What, uh, what happened? Well, it didn't happen. No, it's an intentional hole, you know, knocking through the wall, like, you see. 
Elder will kill you. Oh, I'll clean the mess up. Don't worry about that. But are you sure it's safe to knock hold through that safe wall? Safe as houses. Yeah, well, houses are only safe, Stan, as long as there's something to hold them up. <sighs> Look, you can't I'm... go knocking holes everywhere. I know what I'm doing. If that had been a bearing wall, it would have been down by now, wouldn't it? Well, I'm sure I hope you do, cos I don't. <laughs> what's, uh, what's it for? Hey, hang on. I'll show you. I'll show you proper. Hang on. Would you like a cup of tea, Mrs. Clegg? Joshua been round again. You what? Joshua. And the walls came tumbling down. No tumbling about that. A lot of our graft got into that, I'll tell you. Yeah, well, Joshua had a bit of help from the Almighty. It was on your side. It's all my own work, innit? And what's it for, if you don't mind me asking? A serving hatch when it's done. Stan? Yeah? Are these lines supposed to mean anything? Oh, yeah. Guidelines, you know. Oh, I see. Well, you've gone right over at the top here. And the bottom. Oh, oh yes, so you have. Oh, well, never mind. If you take a bit more out of the sides, that'll even it up. Look, do you mind? I'm a professional at this game. Thank you. Oh, well, if any of you want a big jagged hole installing, you know where to come. It's a trade you don't hear much of. <laughs> Listen, when that's a serving match, which you don't think I can do, I'll prove you wrong, won't I? Oh, it's not going to be an hole. It's going to be a match. You mean with doors and things? With doors and things. What about drawings? Oh, I've got them. Fairclough and Langton, job number. Yeah, I remember that one. Ah, oh, well, let's go bring it back, you know. You know what this was, don't you? Huh. It was a serving hatch for May and Alcock's canteen. There you are, you see. A serving hatch. But it's for mass catering. That's nine foot wide. Yeah, I know. Well, I've scaled it down. I bet you have not. Does Hilda know she's gained a, a hole and lost a wall? Oh, no, no, no. That's a surprise for her, you know. Oh, well, it'll certainly be a lovely surprise, whether it'll ever make a serving act or not. Listen, magic. you can't put me off. She'll be dead chuffed. You, uh, haven't been in touch, then? I mean, he's, uh, he's not written. Well, Stan writes a letter. He gets writer's cramp just pulling the date down. No, I dropped him a card, though, telling him when to expect me home. Oh, so he definitely knows you're coming, then? Yeah, well, he would have known this morning when he got me card. Of course, he'll have forgotten about it by now. He'll be in Rovers. Usual place, usual stance. That big happy grin of his lighting up everything and everybody. Oh, it's nice to be home. Uh, Hilda. Hello, Mrs. O. Hey, is she? She is. Uh, and is she? She is. Oh, bye, Eck. Fine, haven't you? There's a surprise for me. Oh, in your dinner hour and all. Ah, oh, Stan. One second. You are good to me, Chuck. You know that, don't you? Hey, now listen. Don't you go spoiling whatever it is you're doing by rushing it. Just take your time. Too busy even to see this. 85 seconds. Hilda's arrived home. Just. Didn't you say? Can I come in yet, Chuck? Mm. Ah, Stan. Like it? Oh, it's lovely, Chuck. Just what I've always wanted. You know what it is? Of course I do. What is it? It's a serving hatch. <sighs> Right. Oh, it's just like the one they got in the chippy in Balaclava Street between the shop and the dining room. You know, they shove your steak pudding and peas through it. Haven't got grain doors on them, though. No, and no beading, neither. You wait till Faircoff and Langton see this. They'll curl up with jealousy. 
Uh, Stan? Yeah? You don't think it's, uh, well, a little bit on the big side? Oh, well, you've got to get a tray through, haven't you? Look, supposing this is a tray, yeah? Now then. Mm. Why don't I keep my big mouth shut and I'll have to buy a tray? Again. I'm sorry about the mess, though, but I've got to take carried away, you know. Um, Stan? Yeah? There is just one other little point. What? Well, I wouldn't mention it, Chuck, only I think it's best cleared up right away. Well, go on, go on. Well, um, the kitchen's over there. Yeah. And we have us meals in here. But the serving hatch is over there. Mm hmm So, uh, what do we serve for? I'm glad you asked me that question. Well, I thought I should. Corina and Minnie asked me the same question. What did you tell them? I thought you'd have cottoned on by now. Yeah, well, you know me, I'm a bit slow sometimes. Well, but... I couldn't put a serving hatch from the kitchen to the dining room, could I? Why not? Because that's a bearing wall. What's a bearing wall? It holds a flaming house up, doesn't it? Oh. Does it? Perhaps in the future you'll admire my workmanship. As an equal. Hey, now, don't let it go to your head. I mean, one serving hatch is hardly Coventry Cathedral. Where's your eldest on me? Oh, she's probably upstairs. Uh -huh. Oh, you want to hear her say she likes it, do you? Well, I think it can be arranged. I didn't say... Did I say that, Leonard? Elder, you up there, Lord. Come yes. down a minute, will you? Here I am, Chuck. Hello, Leonard. Raymond. <laughs> hey, it isn't a serving hatch at all. It's a picture frame for Hilda. One endearing feature of life with the Ogdens was the way they closed ranks when outsiders attacked them. This closeness was often put to the test. I'm sure it was him. You sure it was who? Peeping Tom, or whatever you call him. Well, at this time, in broad daylight. Oh, go on, I'll see. What happened? Well, I'd just come in and I was putting my stuff on the kitchen, you know, like you do, and I... I thought I heard something moving outside. Was there nobody there? Well, it took me all my time to pick up courage to go and open the door and look, didn't it? And? Well, when I got there, there was nobody there, of course, but the outside door was open. And it's never left open, is it, Alan? Never. No, it's not, long. I've been watching out for the Peeping Tom. What flipping Peeping Tom? Peeping Tom, what peeped in at me on my own backyard, that peeping Tom? Well, I'll tell you something. What? He's peeped in once, he won't peep again. On the other end, he might just do that. Why might he? He might not believe what he saw in the first place. Oh, yes, yeah, just a big joke to you, isn't it, Stanley Ogden? Well, it's not to us women, because that's the thing about peeping Toms, isn't it? Well. They never peep at men. And that's pretty revelationary, I'd say. So you know what you can do? You can get your own flipping tribe, because I'm going back upstairs to my observations. It's my duty as a female and a woman. Hey, they've caught him. They've never. They have the half jumping him and all. Could you see him? No, there was too much scuffling. Well, I hope they haven't overstepped the mark. They should have let the police deal with him. Well, I don't know. There's something to be said for just giving him a thumb. There's nothing to be said for it. We don't live in jungle. Well, main thing is they've nabbed him. Now we can all it. sleep. What on either. earth is happening? Oh, hello, Auntie Annie. Hey, they've caught him. Who's caught who? Beeping Tom. Get off, will you? Get off! Get off, will you? Is this yours? What are you doing? Bringing your peeping Tom back home. Get out! Stan, what are they doing to oh, you? Oh, the flipping heads, the flipping heads. Emily, Lucille and Elsie have all seen a man in the back entries. What? Stan! Yeah, sorry, Mrs Ogden, but we found him out there. We caught him. Out. Flipping man! Get out of my house. Not till we've decided what we're going to do with him. Well, it can't have been him, can it? A man wouldn't go peeping on his own wife now, would he? Who says he did? Nobody said he did. But somebody peeped in at me. Right, I killed her. You're quick after Mark. What do you mean by that? Are you sure you just don't want to be left out? Listen, you just watch what you say. I tell you, I was peeped on. She was. She flaming was. Oh, you believe me now, do you? Really? Well, didn't you believe her before, Stanley? You've got it all wrong. All right, you tell us, Stan. What were you doing out there? I, I was... I, I was... Take your time, Stan, because you better make it sound good. Let well, him speak. I was doing what you were doing, looking for that fella. Oh, yes. And what were you going to do, Stan? Jump on yourself from I a great height? I don't know. Height? I was just waiting. How long was you there? I don't know. Well, he can't have been there very long, because you went to the Flying Horse, didn't you? No, I changed him. I didn't go to the Flying Horse. Is that where he said he was going? Why didn't you, Stan? Well, I changed my mind on account of what you said about that fella. I see, Stanley. You were going to the Flying Horse, but you changed your mind. Why? I said... Are you sure someone didn't just catch your eye on the way out? Look, you know me, fellas. Yes, that's that. right. We know you, Stanley, now. I was doing what you were doing. I don't believe you. Hmm? How about you, Lucky? Yeah, no. It's not very plausible, is it? No, hang on. Look, before we lean on him, we've got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Doubt? What doubt? A peeping Tom's a fellow who goes skulking round back entries, isn't he? Well, we found a fellow skulking round the back entries, him. That's right, isn't it? Suggest we call the police. Oh, no, no, we've got to think about it before we rush around making charges. Well, what else can we do? Lynching? Now, listen, oh, fellas. Sit down, you. Look, we've got to decide. 
I reckon the women ought to have a say. I'll go with that. Well, we're not just going to sit here. Well, I wouldn't you know, go like... anywhere else if I was you. Because if you run off and the police get hold of you, you'll have no chance, right? What a flaming lot of mates, huh? You know, people like you make me feel sick. I'd just like to tell you. Get out. Go on, get out. I don't think I've no sympathy for you because I have. You're the one who's sick. Sick in your head. You wouldn't believe it, would you? Your own flipping mates. It'll be in the paper. Your name and address. Oh, and shut everything. up. Well, you look in that paper, you see him. I'm pinching man for going in and out of your own flipping house. Ah, oh, but Stan, you wasn't going out or coming in, was you? You was just there in the gimmel. It hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have been there at all. Oh, no, it's no good blaming me, Chuck. That'll get nowhere in a court of law. You stand as you believe him. No, I can just see how it looks, Stan. I mean, you was there and you never told me you was. Now, you must have been there an hour. Well, you know I didn't do it. Well, I know it wasn't you looking in at me that time. Well, then. But, uh, are you sure you didn't get the idea like? Right, that's it. Now, just tell me, Stan. They can do what they like. My old wife's turn against I'm me, I'm not she? turning against you, Chuck. Then give me six months, I don't care. Then call a peel, I don't care. Kick a dog when he's down, kick Stanley Ogden. That's it, isn't it? Stan, why didn't you go to the flying horse? Told you about that bloke of yours. Now, shut up. Stan, you can see how it looks. I don't care how it looks. If they're going to come, why don't they come and get it over with? Because nobody ever believes me. Went right down Rosamond Street for that, because they're nicer. I don't know. You live with them, you drink with them, they turn their backs on you. What have I ever done to them? Oh, don't, Chuck. Aren't you having dinner? No, I'm not hungry. I don't think I am, really. Oh. I wouldn't mind a drink, though. Hey, you're not going near Annie Walker's? No, no, no. No. What a swines they are. What are we going to do? We've got to live here. Yeah? We'll just ignore them, Stan. You can't ignore them, though, when you know what they're thinking about you. Yeah? Don't know I walked down that flipping street this morning. You just hold your head up, Chuck, and spit in their eye for them. I can't, look. Well, I can. I could spit in their eye. That Billy Walker's the one, you know, like his mother, I and Mighty. Oh, I've a good mind to go down there now and tell him what I think about no, it. No, love. Why not? It'll do no good. It'll do me good. No, love. Listen, they started it. I'll just show them who they're calling. They weren't calling you. I was called a liar to me face when I said about that peeping Tom having a go at me. I'm going down there, Stan. I'll wipe that Billy Walker's eye for him. No. Listen, I'm not sitting here gormless after what they've done to you. You'll cause a scene. Right. I've got a few things to say to certain people in here. And before I leave, by God, you'll hear me. Mrs. Ogden, I must ask you to leave these premises. I'm not leaving here, Annie Walker, until I've told you what I think about you. Call Billy. Call him, call him. I'm here for his benefit. And you, Langton, and one or two more of you. All right, Beth. You're a bunch of filthy scum, the lot of you. Scum! There's not one of you fit to lick my Stan's boots. Well, I'm not going to say it twice, Hilda. Out. And you, Billy Walker, you can talk about peeping Toms. Because I've seen some of the filthy books you read with pictures of girls in them with now Tom showing the lot. Aye, you didn't know about that, did you? Well, it's very funny you're so quick to point the blame. Maybe I know why. So do I. You try it and I'll have your eyes out. I know you need them bother I'm going. By heck, a, a maggot wouldn't stop here with you lot. You're, you're like a disease. I've just got one thing to say before I go. <laughs> to the lot of you. Who is it from, Chuck? I don't know. What do you mean you don't? Well, it's one that's not, not signed, you know. Let's have a look. No, don't worry yourself, love. They want flipping flogging. Well, what did it say? A lot of foul language. Here, if it's somebody in this street... I don't think it is. Was it just foul language? No. Get out, pack up and shift off, you know. Oh, no, Stan. We're not getting pushed out of here. This is our house and our home. We're not getting shoved out of it by the likes of them. Little, little slugs like that. Never yeah, get out of say What can we do about them? We could sue him, Stan, if he took every last penny. I don't know who it is. Oh, God, if I did. But we're down to our last penny, any road. We lost two more customers again today. No reason given. Oh, I. Look, love, there's no we can do. Oh, yes, there is. We can put a notice in the paper for a start. What for? Well, just to let them know. You've seen them. So-and-so will take legal action against anybody uttering slander against him, you know. What good will that do? Well, it'll show them we're not going to stand for it. We could put it in the Gazette. Oh, but how much will it cost? I don't care what it costs, Dan. Yeah, we could. Yeah. Well, well, but what, what do we say? Well, you just say, yeah. Uh, you... Hang on a minute. Here you are now. Now then, you say, yeah. Uh, I, Stanley Ogden, do hereby yeah. give 
notice that I will take legal action. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. You can drop it in at the Gazette on your way past. Legal action against anybody. No, no, wait a bit. Uh, any person or persons. That's right. Right. Read that. Just read it, and when you're ready, you can decide what you're going to do about it. Mrs Ogden, quite categorically, if you create any more further trouble, I shall inform the police. Here, save your breath and read Mrs. that. Mrs Ogden, if I... Right, prepared... if you haven't got your glasses on, you know, I'll read it for you. Man on peeping Tom charge, it says. Edward Blakely Ferguson, unemployed tool setter of Edison Street, Weatherfield, was today charged with an action likely to lead to a breach of the peace after a rash of peeping Tom reports in the neighbourhood. Are you all listening to this? Well, there you are. Read it for yourselves. And I hope it chokes you. That's what it says. Remanded for social and psychiatric reports, just like the man said. Ah, well, Chuck. At least we found out somewhat about the kind of people we live with. Uh, well, it's done now, isn't it? Done with. Oh, no, it's not done with. It'll never be done with as long as I live and breathe. Can I come in? I, I don't quite know how to do this, but uh, I've come to apologise. Oh, have you? Uh, I'm sorry, Stan. We all are. You know, Slim, it, it doesn't make any difference. Oh, I don't suppose... Well, it's, it's all I can do. That's not much, is it? You wipe your feet on my flipping name round here for years, haven't you? I'd like you to have a drink with me, Stan. I'd, I'd like you to walk into the Rovers with me. I wouldn't walk in there if you went down on your hands and knees. Would you, Stan? She's right, isn't she? Oh, for crying out loud, I'm eating dirty. What more do you expect me to do? Nothing! You've done it all, haven't you? Yeah, well, I... I reckon everybody feels just about as lousy as I do. And... Well, I'd like to see you down a rover sometime. Well, at least he came. Yeah, what else could he do? I suppose you can call in at the Gazette and cancel a notice. Aye. They can't cancel what's been said, can they? Billy wasn't the only walker to look down his nose at the Ogdens. The rivalry between Hilda and Annie, her employer, led to some remarkable confrontations. Children are such a problem, aren't they? No matter how old they get. What do you mean by that? Go on, what did you mean? Just that children are a problem. Meaning our Irma? If the cat fits... You've never stopped thinking about our Irma ever since you found out where she was going tonight, have you? Oh, you've tried to hide it doing your landlady act, but I've seen you glancing at us. Tittle tackle written in big letters right across your eyeballs. But what our Irma does is her own business, you know. It's not her fault she's attractive and fellas want to take her out. I've never heard the fellas ever queuing up to take your daughter. Out. And why? Because she's like a mother, that's why. Got a face like a pants scrubber. So you just find her own If you don't mind my saying so, your mood doesn't bode well for the day. I trust that you'll be more animated by the time we open up. Can't guarantee it, Mrs. Walker. Trouble's I've got. We got the bum rush from the community centre, you know. I'm fully aware of his problems, Mr. Dalton. Well, I knew there was taking too much time. Especially here. Yeah. I mean, she's not had no experience of the cleaning profession, has she? Folks seem to think shifting muck's easy, but it isn't. It's an art. A dying art, by the look of it. Of course, um, it could have repercussions on you, couldn't it? What could? Well, if they get thrown out across there and they follow their noses, they could be back across here, couldn't they? Living with you again. Still, that uh, is looking on the black side, Mrs. Walker. Jet black side. What are you smiling at, Hilda? Working classes aren't allowed to smile, just to suffer. Oh, I've just given Mrs Walker somewhat horrible to think about. Ah, that is allowed. <laughs> 
Um, Mrs. Walker. Yes. You know that uh, you know that hat of yours with the uh, the fancy fur around the brim. I do. Well, um, you need a hat in court, don't you? I mean, it's like church, isn't it? If you want to borrow my hat, Mrs. Ogden, why not come out with it? Ask for it in a straightforward manner. Can I borrow your hat then, Mrs. Walker? It wouldn't suit you. Oh yeah, it would. Yeah, we've got the same sort of faces, you and me, you know. We've got very good hat faces, you and me, Mrs. Walker. That's where we're lucky. Are we indeed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely do justice to that hat. Well, I don't know where it is. Otherwise, I would have been glad to lend it to you. Oh, I know where it is, Mrs. Walker. You put it on top of your wardrobe. If you know where it is, you'd better go and get it then, hadn't you? Right. Thanks very much. Mrs. Ogden. Yes, Mrs. Walker. Do you ever feel that the lives of the rest of the world are far more devious than your own? Well, how do you mean exactly? Not quite so straightforward, roundabout. Mm. Nothing quite what it seems to be. Yeah, well, I don't know about the rest of the world, but Stanley certainly is. I mean, his right foot doesn't know what his left's doing, never mind his right hand. Really? It's a wonder he doesn't keep falling flat on his face. <laughs> Of course, no one knew Stan's shortcomings better than Hilda, especially his ability to sink deeper and deeper into trouble, even when trying desperately to get out of it, like the occasion he dropped the Ogden's telly and the rental man refused to fix it. Why won't they fix it, Stan? I don't know. Well, I must say, they've always been very good with me. I mean, slightest thing, they've been straight round, you know. Oh, uh, perhaps you had a good smile, eh? Mm. Last time it was the picture. And they just brought me a new set. Well, they won't even look at it. Mm. And as Mrs. Johnson and Amelia treat her, set on fire. They took that one away and brought her a new set. Set on fire? Well, yeah, I mean, they do, you see. That's why at the end they say, switch off. You mean it's uh, so set on fire? Yeah. And no questions asked? Bless us, Stan, that's never lighter fuel. They'll never know. You're not going to set light to it. Mrs. Johnson and Amelia Street, her set went up. Oh, bet hers wasn't all sodden with petrol. And they brought a new one, and by the same rule, they've not tried to fix us, have they? Stanley, I'm having no part of this. If I get the right amount, they'll never know. And you're not setting fire to it in here, you'll burn the house down. I'll take it in the yard. I'm having nothing to do with it, Stan. <laughs> what can you do with a burnt out telly? Well, don't the bin man a dollar take it away. Well, what's the shop going to say? They need no if we don't tell them. But we'll have to go on paying the rental. I know. For nothing? Not even a piece of furniture? Yeah. But, Stan, someday somebody is going to start wondering why we go on paying rent for the oldest telly in the world. But we'll have bought a new one by then, won't we? What well, us buy a telly? Phew, I've got more chance of getting a proposal out of Michael Heseltine. Well, what do you suggest? Well, you could go round to Wilson's and tell him it's set fire to itself. You've seen it, Chuck. And? Well, put it this way, Mrs. Ogden, <laughs> life's full of surprises. <laughs> you want to live with my husband? Set on fire, he says. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm. All by itself. Wasn't even working yesterday. No, well, I managed to fix it, you see. And I was sitting there watching the news and then, ooh, like a factory chimney it was, you know. Where? Where? Well, out of the back, mostly. Uh, no, I mean, where was the set when all this happened? Where? Well, where it usually was. Over there? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And there was a lot of smoke, you say? Black smoke. And flames. All pouring out their back. Mm. And how come it never damaged the room? It didn't, did it, Mr Ogden? Well, uh, well uh... Ah, quick thinking, that. Quick thinking? Yeah, on Stan's part. Really? Oh, ah, yeah. He, uh, he picked it up and had it out through that kitchen in the backyard before it could do no damage, didn't you, Stan? Yeah, yeah. It goes without saying. <laughs> and when you got it out, though, you just let it burn to a cinder, very nearly. What else could it do? Yeah, what else could it do? 
Well, a little bit more quick thinking. Bucket of water, you know, there might have been something left to mend. It went like a bomb, like a flipping bomb. Yeah, and, and you're not supposed to put water on electricity fires, are you? I noticed you didn't burn your hands either, did you, Mr Ogden? No, well, I was, I was lucky. Yeah, <laughs> only his best cardigan. Yeah. Shall we be able to claim for that, you know? I mean, it was brand new. Leather buttons and all, haven't it, Judd? Oh, le leather buttons, yeah. <laughs> Mr and Mrs Ogden, I've got two alternatives. Oh, yeah. I can go back to my dad. Tell him everything you've told me and suggest that we bring you a new set round pronto. Oh, that'd be very nice. A service for you. But I'm not going to do that. Oh. What I'm going to tell him is that you owe us 75 quid. 75 quid? And that's being very generous, Mr Ogden. 75 quid, Joe. How are you think? Drop dead, Esther. Then get up and do it again. Co-op club. Electricity stamps. Insurance chap. Rotten coal. Yet again, down on their luck. It was Hilda to the rescue with a harebrained scheme that would put even Stan to shame. Oh, my hey, Stan, listen to this. What? This fella here. What about him? Well, he's only won a new car and a thousand pounds, that's all, in a competition. Johnny Bagger. Here, yeah, that's not all. He's won hundred pounds worth of grub. And a trip to America for two last month and all. He must have been one of the judges to win that lot. Here's the hackers, like, listen. This brings his total number of wins to 742 since he started doing competition seriously 15 years ago. He estimates that the total value of the prizes he has won is nearly £25,000. It's all right for some, isn't it? Yeah, well, somebody's got to win them, Stan. I've always said that. How many times have I said to you, somebody's got to win these things? He must be the brain of Britain when that's flipping up. That's just it, he's not. He's a cleaner on the buses. He's what? A cleaner on the buses. Now, just goes to show. Anybody can do him if they take him seriously. Well, no, I suppose if you go in for enough of them, you're bound to win in time. It's like the law of averages, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I never thought I'd live to see the day. No, it does seem funny to a man, doesn't it? He can't use his brain box. Yeah, I can hear the creaking and groaning from here. Oh, that is what I meant, actually. He's been in a quarter of an hour. He's had a touch his beard. Now that is serious. Yeah, well, it's a very powerful motive, you know. What's that? Chance of getting something for nothing. That's what these competitions are all about, isn't it? Playing on people's greed. Ah, oh, come on. It's only a bit of harmless fun, though. I think they'd agree with you. Look, it's very serious to me. <laughs> Nine letters. Oh. Lizard, what, changes colour to keep out of bother nine letters? And it's not Stan Ogden, cos I've tried it. Well, I don't know, do I? You do the crossword. Well, you might at least give us hand. There's a fiver in this, you know. I don't know if any disc brakes or acceleration from now to 50 in eight seconds. You are? First car, you've got to put them in order, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, there's not much point in going fast if you can't stop, is it? That's a point, isn't it? Then again, on the other hand, there's no good having fancy brakes if the thing won't go. Thanks very much. Mm. Lizard, what changes colour? Didn't I see them two on the telly a couple of weeks back? University challenge? You don't want to let Hilda hear you say that. She's already booked a stall on the market to sell all the stuff they're going to win. Well, thanks for telling <laughs> us, kid. I'll start saving up. Look out, she's here. Oh, uh, hi, hello. Uh, you know them lizards? Lizards? <laughs> yeah, you know them what changes colour like? Oh, chameleons, yes, yes. Well, what about them, Hilda? Yeah, that's them. Oh, well, no, no, it's really, no. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> hey, Stan. What? I just felt chameleon. We've come up. We've never. We have, we've won one. But what have we won? The pools? No, a competition. What? Safari? No. Cruise? No. Look, Jody. As much as you can carry out the shop in two minutes. What? As much as you can shift in two minutes, it's a new shop opening. They're going to let you loose to grab as much as you can as quick as you can? Yeah. <laughs> what sort of a shop is it? What does delicatessen mean exactly? No, no, that is not allowed. Five seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. She's got a load of 
frozen food and she hadn't even got a freezer. Well, she probably didn't think. She doesn't do much of that at the best of times, but it must be impossible in the middle of that lot. Yeah, but it's good though, isn't it? She's done all right. I don't do that. Hey, thanks for your help. You're very welcome. Now, I make it uh, 142 items I should have. How many do you make it, Stan? Oh, it made me lose count now. Ooh, can't be trusted to do anything this well, one. Well, well, then, what, one for one, one for two. What, what do you make it? Oh, uh, um. It was 142, Mrs. Ogden. Oh, go on, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> What's this, then? Dolmage. Dolmage? Ah. Dolmaves. Very nice. Vine leaves stuffed with meat and spices. Very nice. Leaves? Vine leaves. Off a tree? Off the vine. Oh, fancy that. Why not? I mean, they're only leaves. What about, uh, well, what about tea leaves? I don't eat them. Well, no, but there's leaves you do eat. Like what? Oh, well, like... Cabbage leaves? Yeah, cabbage leaves. Not stuffed with meat? Well, you eat them with meat. You have them on the same plate as your meat, don't oh, you? let's face it. This lot's not us, love. Oh, I don't know what is you if it doesn't come out of a chip pan. You don't like my food? Oh, uh, no, no, it's not exactly he doesn't like it. No, it's just that, well, he's never had it, you see, so he doesn't know. Not that that'll stop him saying he doesn't like it. Mind you, you can see his point, can't you? I mean, it's not as though we come from where you come from. <laughs> no. Where do you come from? Cyprus. From Augusta. Oh, well, there you are, then. So, what do you want to do? Well, um, I was wondering if, uh, well, do you think we could have the money instead? Is this what you want, Mr. Ogden? Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. That's, uh, wait a minute, that's, um, 107 It would be impossible to give you so much. You must remember how much this food cost me at wholesale prices. And that there is carriage to here and back. No, I couldn't give you more than uh, 60 pounds. 75? Uh, okay, oh. 75. Oh, and um, there is just one other thing before you bring the fella in. Um, I've never tried any of this uh, caviar. Do you think you could throw in a jar or two? Okay. Ah, oh, thank you. I get the driver. Dazzling footwork out of the 75 quid. Yeah, well, that was a sum that sprang easily to my mind. It's what the telly shop wants of us before we can have another set. You're not going to... Oh, yes, I am. As far as I'm concerned, Stan, it's a very good swap. Ooh, you can keep your stuffed cabbage leaves. Give me a slice of Bamber Gascoigne. Well, they got a new TV, but when Hilda wanted to make other posh improvements to their lifestyle, she faced an uphill struggle with Stanley. Well, it's all right. Oh, Stanley. That were yellow when we put it up. Ah, oh, last year. Last year? Oh, it's typical, is that? Six years more like. Hey, no, don't look to the walls. Stan. I'm listening. Why is it I have to fight for every flaming thing I want? It don't need doing. It's not only saying no to wallpaper, though, is it? It's saying no every time you think you're going to have to make some sort of effort. What are you on about now? Oh, us quality of life, that's what I'm on about. Why, it's always such a blooming uphill struggle to stop it from dragging in dust. Well, why can't you just, uh, wash them down? Wash them? Dry washing that down. Now, where are you going? Stan? I've got a meeting in that line of business. Wallpaper. Oh, all right. How would uh, half price suit you? Half price? You're kidding. I'm telling you. Half price. You leave it to me. Oh, but Hilda said... Never mind what Hilda said. She won't know, will she? And just think what an extra few bob in your pocket will do. Oh, it's a lot to pay out for paper, isn't it? Especially when you don't have to. What do you well, want, little don't you? Well, look, that's what she wants. Oh, it's very unusual, that, yeah. Yeah, very unusual. Yeah, well, if I give you five quid, eh? Eh, uh, 
you better make it ten, Stan. Yeah. Uh, well, it might have gone up since I saw him last, you know, inflation and all that. I mean, you can't rely on anything these days, can you? <laughs> well, I'm on my way. Your troubles are over, Stanley. Just what the doctor ordered. Getting worried, were you? No, we weren't. Were we, Hilda? Where's the change? One pound, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty p. Is that all? One pound fifty? It's all to door service, no overheads, no bus fares. Go on, have a deco. Have a look, it won't bite. Last few rolls, then. You've been very lucky, Mrs. Old. There isn't another bit of that to be had anywhere. Ta oh, very much, mate. Oh, any time, Stan. Eh, uh, I'm not, eh, uh, stopping you from having your dinner, am I? Stan? No, what? Go and get an extra fish and chips for yourself. Oh, right? that would be very nice, Mrs. Old. I won't say no. Why can't you go? Well, I've got to stop and look after Eddie here, haven't I? Well, it's the least I can do after getting us this. <laughs> now, you sit down there, Chuck, and start on them. I'll go and get the kettle on. Look, smashing on that wall, that paper, Will. No doubt about it. Like tin peaches, do you? Oh, yes, please. On top of the milk. Hey, it's gone pale. Give us another bus. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, it's every flaming one. Well, what's happened? How the heck do I know what's happened? What's all this, then? New fashion, is it? One of your mate's bright ideas? Honest, Mrs. Ogden. Honest you? That's a laugh for a start. How was I to know? I've not seen nothing like it in my life before. No, oh, it's new to me and all. Well, what have you got to say? Nearly ten flipping quid we've paid and this lot's not fit for use and we can't get any more, neither. <laughs> and what's so funny, Stanley Ogden? Go on, tell us, what's so funny? I was just thinking. That's a change. It'll be all right when the other fades, won't it? <laughs> I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Look, uh, perhaps we could just finish this wall, like, and then uh, join the other bits together. Ten flaming quid? And we have to start joining bits together? Oh, I could cry. Honest, I could sit down and cry. We'll think of something, Joe. Of course we will. Don't you worry. If he doesn't get us some more of that paper for that last wall, all this lot's gonna have to come off. Hey. Oh, yes. You'll have to strip it all off and start again. Hello, hello. Here we are again. Hello, Eddie. Halfway to Liverpool. We're talking about you. Didn't feel the ears, Bernie. <laughs> well, you got it then. That's the main thing. Didn't say that just now, did you? I merely said he seemed to be taking his time, that's all. Halfway to Liverpool. I said for the time he's been, he could have been halfway to Liverpool. Oh, no. Are you oh, yes. Oi! When you got a minute, oh. I've been running around like a blue arse fly after this wallpaper. Oh. Through the heat and dust of the day, it's parching work. And a bottle of beer would go down very nicely. Well, we haven't got one in, but uh, Rovers should be open shortly. I'll tell you what, we'll stroll down there. By the time we get there, the doors will just be opening. Yeah. Just a minute, Stanley Ogden. Why we have a look at this wallpaper? Uh, the thing is, Mrs Ogden, I couldn't get exactly the same as we had before. You are? Uh, well, you see, I couldn't get it, but what I have got is what you need. A nice contrasting wall. Aye, a nice contrast. What I want is the same as what's on here. That's what I want. Yeah, well, it's very tricky, you see, love. Oh, very tricky. You see, there wasn't any of that other about, but with a nice contrasting wall, it sets off the other, you see. Anyway, I've got two for you to have a look at. Have a look at it, love. I mean, have a look. Yeah. Get that on this wall. Go down a treat. Oh, that's horrible. But that's what they're all having. They go mad for that in London. Yeah, well, we haven't gone mad up here yet. Show us the other one. Always said you were a shrewd judge, Mrs Ogden, because this other one, this other one is the pick of the litter. <sighs> Good, innit? Hey, that was smashing up there, wasn't it? How's that, then? I'm yeah. not having that. It's kids' paper. Now, look here. You go back to that mate of yours and get me some, some all of this what's on already, else there's going to be trouble. But it's not easy, Mrs Ogden. I can live with this. <laughs> it's cheerful. Ooh, you're hopeless, you. Do you know, I'm sorry I got rid of our Irma's playpen. 
It would have just done for you. It's obvious you're starting your second childhood. Eh, uh, look, Mrs Ogden, uh, the Rovers will be open now. Is it, uh, is it all right if your Stanley comes out and plays? Ooh, that's all he's fit for. And you. Stan, yeah. cup holder that. Oh, ta! What is it? A daddy with some beer. Oh. Some beer. Yeah, that'll wake you up, missus. Oh, I wasn't asleep. I was only resting my eyes. Well, rest your eyes on that. And hang on. There you are, from Langton's party, smuggled out. Oh, God, yeah. lad. Oh. And that is not all. Because here is the answer to all our problems. Oh, you managed to get it, then? Wait for it. I've had a word with my pal in the trade. And he says he's got this paper that they don't normally sell to the public because it's special, right? But seeing as how he owes me a favour... Not the same, is it? Well, it's not exactly the same, no. I'm not interested. Look, it's not exactly the same, granted, but it's better than the same. Go Stanley, on. give us a hand with it. There, that is your scenic panorama contrast wall. Hey, as powerful as that. That is our word for it in the trade, Stanley. Powerful. Yeah, well, it is powerful, I'll admit that. You see, it gives you what is known as a mural effect. You see, that is your mural feature, panorama, contrast wall. Dead trendy. Latest, that is. I've not seen it in that beautiful Holmes magazine. Ah, well, my pal in the trade said it's very old shush, and it's going to be in next month's magazine. And then everyone will want it. That's like the country side round Charlie, isn't it? Well, Annie Walker's never had one of them mural walls. That I do know. All right, go on, then. I think it'll suit us very nicely, will that? Well, it, uh, it takes some adjusting to, Hilda. I mean, uh, pow. Do you take sugar? No, ta. Oh, well, uh, help yourself to biscuits. <laughs> it's, uh, it's terrific, Hilda. What do you do if there's an avalanche? <laughs> no, it does just put you right there, though, doesn't it? I've seen now to touch it since Cinerama. Oh. Sam did it all himself, you know. Well, the mural, anyway. Are you sure it's straight? Well, of course it's straight. I mean, you can tell by the top corners it's straight. I get the idea that lake's sloping. No. No, no, it's not sloping. It's just the reflection of the mountain what makes it do that. Oh, come in, it's open house. Oh, I just... Uh... Uh -huh. You couldn't resist it, you couldn't. Well, I was invited and I had a moment to spare. I knew you would. Very familiar, that wallpaper, Mrs Ogden. Oh, you've noticed. It's the same as what's on your bedroom, Mrs Walker. Isn't it amazing how different things seem in a different room? Mm. <laughs> Shut your eyes, Mrs Walker. Bed. Shut your eyes, turn round and open them. Oh, my word, Mrs Ogden. Hmm. Do you know, dear, I feel just a little giddy. <laughs> Would you mind if I sat facing the other way until I'm acclimatised? <laughs> well, either you're one for the great outdoors or you're not. Miss Elf, I am. Perhaps you don't remember that mural. It was, of course, replaced by the legendary and more familiar Sea View. The transformation was caused by the arrival of a simple water bill. Here, what do you call this? Where did you get that? In your jacket. What are you doing in my jacket? Well, going through your pockets, what do you think? Any road, I'm asking the questions. What do you call this? Well, it's a letter, isn't it? It's a reminder. A final reminder for the flipping water rate. Now, what's it doing in your jacket pocket? Oh, I was hiding it. They upset you. Well, of course they upset me. But don't crack on, that's why you was hiding it. Oh, no. If there's any consideration knocking about, it's for yourself, not for me. Cos you know I'll be on at you to shift yourself and get out and earn some money to pay the damn thing. That's criminal, is that? Oh, I know it is. They're criminal, you're born idle and I'm stuck in the middle. Well, come on, say something. What? Oh, like how do we get the money to pay this flipping bill? Well, there'll be money due for the window cleaning, won't there? Well, go out and get it then. On the bank holiday? You can't go around knocking at people's doors asking for money on a bank holiday. Well, you'll stand a fat chance of getting it after they've been to the pub, won't you? Now, can we cover this with what's owing? I suppose so. Hmm. Nobody around here gives us tick, do they? Do they, Eckers, like? They just batter at us till they get their money. 
Ah, well, you can do a bit of battering for a change, right? I suppose so. Ooh, I suppose so, I suppose so. It's the trouble with you, you're too damn suppository. Now get out there and insert yourself. Oh, well, okay. I've taken uh, 30 bob. Blow your 30 bob. What's up? I'll tell you what's up. We're being had for mugs, that's what. Flipping mugs. Do you know them next door pay less water rate than what we do? Uh, uh, are they? Well, I've just told you, haven't I? No, oh, you asked me. Oh, shut up. Three of them at it. Water gushing out of them taps all the hours God sends and they pay less than we do. I've been to Marshall's at the back and all. They pay the same with six kids and an auntie. Right. Well, there's now you can do about it. Oh, isn't there? Isn't there just? I'll show you what I can do about it. For a start, you're having a bath every night starting tonight. Eh? Hey? You heard. If you didn't, you will when you washed your ears out a few times. Well, that, that, that's cutting off your nose to spite your face, isn't it? It's the equalitarian society, Stanley. That's what it is. What's good for them is good for us. Too many baths are not good for you. They're uh, weakening. Get upstairs. Hilda. Get upstairs! Oh, heck. If cleanliness is next to godliness, I'll make an angel out of you before we've done. Go on. Have you thought how much it costs to eat the water? I've thought. Now get in that bedroom and get your clothes off. Oh. And you better get used to it, because you'll be doing it every night. I'll show them. Oh, and here. Make sure it's full before you get in, right? Have I got to go in? Yes, you've got to. I only hope I don't get pneumonia. I just hope you don't clog the drains. Unfortunately, and typically, Stan fell asleep while the bath was running. The water overflowed and ruined Hilda's original mural. She was livid. The Ogdens had meanwhile found a real friend in ex-con Eddie Yates. He not only supplied both the murals, but when Stan and Hilda fell ill with flu, he was determined to look after them. Oh, I'm parched. Me and all. Somebody's going to get up and make some tea. They've got to. Yeah, they are. Oh, all right. You've lasted me out. No, no, it's not that, you see. Oh. It's just that I shouldn't take any risks being a breadwinner, you know. Stan. Well, Just have a look, see if I've left my head on the pillar. I can't feel it. While you're waiting for the kettle to boil, you can make me a bacon butty, can't you? Oh. Here, what's that? What? Any survivors? Not twice when you bounce it. Is anyone still alive? Hey, it's Eddie. Oh. We're up here, mate. Thank God for that. Oh. What's your list, then? It's the wrong time of the year for hibernating, you know. We've got the flu, Eddie. We have that. Oh, is that all? You know, he had me worried on the way up. I thought I was going to have to give Stanley the kiss of life. Does it have to be darker than the stoker's armpit in here? Oh, dear. I've seen more life in a back door. Hey, do you think you could get us a warm drink, Eddie? Certainly, Mrs. O. Anything else? Heart massage, blanket bath, or what's it with the handle missing? No, just a drink of tea. And something to eat. Right, Stanley. Look, I know you two have entertained serious doubts in the past of the advantages of knowing me. Well, today, you're going to get the living proof of what they are. They'll be calling me the Angel of Coronation Street before I'm finished. If you can just hang on to existence for another couple of minutes. You're very kind, Eddie. Of course I am, Mrs. O. Of course I am. Oh, hey, a bacon buddy be good, mate. You know, I don't reckon you're as ill as you make out if you can eat bacon butties. It proves how ill I am. Only asking for one. Oh. How are the invalids this morning? Rotten. Oh, I've hardly slept a wink. I just dropped off when you come busting in. What do you want to wake us up for? Well, I had to wake you up, didn't I? It's time for your sleeping pill. <laughs> what? Oh, forget it. Look, I brought you breakfast up for you. Breakfast in bed. Now, how long is it, Hilda, since Stan brought you breakfast up for you? Never. That's how long it is. He brought his own breakfast up a time or two when he's had too much ale the night before. Once, only once, and that wasn't the ale. That was a bad pie. Oh. What time is it, any road? It's nearly half eight. They're all piling into Baldwin. Mm. Half eight? What do you want to wake us up for? You see, you get woken up earlier than that in hospital, you know. 
I've got a routine to keep to. I've got to look after the house as well as you two. I don't know, some people are self, self, self. Oh, you should have let us sleep. Right. Fair enough. You snuggle down again. I'll take the breakfast back down. Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. Cindy brought it up. We'll, uh, we'll force it down. Yeah, should think so and all. Oh. Here we are. Ah. Nice cup of tea and a chucky egg apiece and a nice bit of toast. And you can make your own soldier, Stan. Very nice, Eddie. Right. Ah. Here, Stan, let me do that. Oh, I'm the wake of the kitten. I need feeding up before I get back work. Well, I'm not starting again till I'm fit, neither. I'll tell you what, we're in trouble if I get pearly, aren't we? That bed doesn't look big enough for three of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's boring lying in bed, isn't it? Hmm. Might be boring to you, Stan Lick, but it's not boring to me. I mean, when you're on the go from morning till night, slaving away all the hours God sends. Ooh, lying in bed isn't boring. Stop picking on me, will you? You're always picking on me. Look, oh! said was, I'm thankful to be having the rest. Nag, 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 nag. No wonder I'm ill. Now, I don't nag you. You'd know about it if I did my word. You do nag, you do so. I never nag you. Now, I don't. Come on, admit it. I don't nag you, do All I? right, all right, all right. Let it rest. Oh, my head's swimming. I've gone all muzzy now. I feel rotten. Oh, rotten. Fellas don't know what it is to feel rotten. I bet I feel worse than you do. I think my voice might be going and all. No such flaming look. You don't talk to me. I do talk to you. Go on, then. Talk to me now. Look, I'm trying to do my football polls, aren't I? See? You can't do, can you? You yeah. can't do a proper conversation like an intelligent person. Yes, I can. Go on, then. Let's hear you. Well, what about? Well, anything. You pick a topic, somewhat interesting, what we can discuss. Well, then I'm feeling poorly. Oh, see, I knew you couldn't do it. I can. Uh, look, they, these football pools, they use Australian teams on them. How do you mean? Well, we don't play football in England in summer, you see, so they use Australian teams. Well, what about it? Well, so they've got funny names. You, you can't understand. Look, here's one. Eidelberg. Well, I mean, that's abroad, isn't it? Well, Australia's abroad. No, it's not. Of course it is. No, it's not. It's down under. Well, it's the same thing. No, abroad is like, uh, like, like Germany, not Australia. Oh. Well, go on, then. What about them, these teams you're on about? Well, these teams, you see, I met the fellow in the flying horse. He'd been out there, and he told me that these teams are like our, our Sunday league teams, you know. And they play out in the wild, miles from anywhere, in the desert. And sometimes, if they're a man short, they use a kangaroo. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, see, you can't judge, can you? I mean, you can't judge form like that. You might as well just use a, use a pen. Is that what you call a conversation? Eh? I asked you for a conversation. And all I get is a load of rubbish about kangaroos and football teams. You're never satisfied, are you? Oh. Soon afterwards, Eddie became a lodger at number 13, or, as Hilda preferred to call him, her paying guest. Hilda found Eddie a comfort, and she could really talk to him. Stan shortchanged her, and not only in conversation. When her old Mac needed replacing, he went to the second-hand shop. That's all right. Oh, what for? Frightening the dogs? Oh, no. No, there's only one thing for it. I shall just have to save up and buy myself a new raincoat, that's all. Well, cost a bob or two now, you know, Max. Well, what am I supposed to do? Come in like a drowned rat when it's pouring down? Oh, don't worry, it'll be no skin off your nose. I'll take it out of my Christmas money. Well, you can't touch the Christmas money yet. Why not? Well, you can't, I mean, that's for all the extras at Christmas. Oh, we'll manage. <laughs> They'll put that on my gravestone, won't they? She didn't look much or weigh much, and she didn't expect much. But she always managed. Look, I'll tell you what. Wait till weekend. I'll get some extra windows in and I'll buy you a new Mac. Why? Well, you say I don't buy you out. Now's my chance. You've been up to summer, haven't you? I can tell by the look on your face. Look, I said I'd buy you a Mac. When I want to do a good turn, you won't let me. And you know why, don't you? Oh. Because every time you want to do me a good turn, it's always because you've just done me a bad turn and I know now it's about. I'll get some more done. Oh, no, you won't. Why? You won't. Just stay where you are. It's only a couple of quid till weekend. Ten. 
There were six days. Just the weekend. Oh, you thieving, great, rotten lump. Are we going to put it back? Liar. Listen to Dirty, me. Dirty, rotten, stinking liar. Elder. Shut up. Oh, where did I ever get you from? Uh, fell over you, didn't I, in blackout? Whew. Should have left you there, pigging your own swill. Because what have you ever brought me, eh? Nothing. Elder. Nothing. Oh, a couple of kids, yeah. Yeah, we mustn't forget them, I suppose. One of us doesn't know we're alive, and the other one, what, looks down his nose at us because he thinks we're muck. And you know what, Stanley? He's right, isn't he? Because that's just what we are. Muck. Six quid till weekend. Oh, will you listen? It's not the money. It's us. I mean, look at us. Spent all our lives arriving here. To this. Well, it's all right. Oh, it's not all right. Oh, don't you ever take your nose out your rotten beer pot long enough to look around you. Don't you ever look back on us married lives, Sam. Life. Knocked about from pillar to post, in work, out of work, dull, dull, rotten, dull. It's not as bad as that. Oh, of course it is. You and your glass back, her up at Inkerman Street. Everybody out there laughing at us. Oh, you want a good laugh? Go find Stanley Ogden. Oh, and don't miss her what's with him, her in the red, rotten Mac. Oh. Don't you understand? I'm sick of being walked on. I'm sick of being the mug round here. And I'm sick of you. So why don't you just do me a favour and go away? Go on, just go. Right. And Stan did leave Hilda, but only for a few weeks. As Stan got older, his health began to fail. After a lifetime of malingering, for once his problems were real. But he couldn't bring himself to tell Hilda. You've still not been near them back windows. Are you listening to me? I said you've still not been near them back windows. I can't get up my ladder, can I? You can't get up your ladder. Look, I'll tell you what. Uh, you pay me half, seeing I've done downstairs windows, and we'll call it quits. Ah, you know what you can do and all. You'll do them proper, I'll leave them alone. I can't get up my ladder. I've told you. And I can't pay you, can I? And I'll tell you something else for now. A window cleaner that can't clean windows is no use to me. So if you were thinking of coming again, forget it. Right, come on. Your turn now. Hey, Sleeping Beauty, I'm talking to you. Hey. I said it's your turn now. Come on, divvy up time. Can't it wait? No, it can't wait. Here. You've not been sat there all day, have you? You have poked your nose outside this door? Of course I have. Right, come on then, divvy up. It's in my jacket pocket. There's no rest of it. You mean this is all you've collected all day? There's not eight quid here. Well, most of them were out, weren't they? Oh, so you went in the Rovers to see if you could catch them in there, I suppose. I did not go in the Rovers. I'm telling you, I didn't go in the Rovers. That's all I could get. Less than eight flipping quid? Well, I've done my best. Well, it's not good enough, is it? There's not enough here to keep a budgie going. Never mind stoke your big fat belly. Well, there's nothing else I can do, is there? Well, that's just where you're wrong, Stanley. Hey. I realise in your case it's changing the habits of a lifetime. But first thing tomorrow morning, you're going to get out there and do what the rest of us have to do. A bit of hard graft for a change. I want you out of this house first thing in the morning, and I don't want to see your face round that door again till it's gone dark. Look, I'm doing my best. First thing in the morning. Uh, Mr. Kovacs, have you got a minute? Just closed for lunch, Mr. Ogden. 
twelve thirty to one thirty. You've got ten hours. Yeah, well, it won't take a minute, you see. I, I was wondering uh, if you'd see your way clear. Well, I was wondering if by any chance you uh, you could manage another few quid. Uh, I've got a, a medical bill, you see. Medical bill? Yeah, let me back. I'll have it done private, like, you know. You're not in Booper, then? I did join the RAC. Mr Ogden, you know the position as well as I do. Before I can let you have any more, I've got to see the colour of what I've let you have already. This isn't Oxfam, you know. I'm not a registered charity. I'm what you might call the local branch of the International Monetary Fund. And what's wrong with that? Nothing. Ogden in. Do you mean Mr Ogden? All right, then Mr Ogden. Is he in? No, he's working. That'll be the day. Here, what do you think you're doing? I've told you he's not in. I know what you said, love. But in my line of business, chaps like your husband have a nasty habit of hiding under floorboards. I'll take it to ease your husband. Hey, you're not, uh, you're not police, are you? No, I look like a copper. Kipax is my name, and I've come for that. Lending. That's right, love money lending. Only in this case, money owing. 185 quid. It'll be more tomorrow and more still the day after. Only there ain't gonna be any day after. Because if that isn't settled within 24 hours, you're in big trouble. So tell him. Well, there must be some mistake. Mistake? There's no mistake. He's been borrowing from me for months. He come round today, the wife gave him a tenner. If I'd have been there, he'd have whistled for it. Right, you've got the message. 24 hours. He knows where I am. He's been often enough. Ooh, it's parky out there, I'll tell you. No need to look like that. I've got some money for you. Here. Six, seven, eight. Where's the tea? Oh, he's been here, has he? Yes, he's been here. A money lender in this house. you been doing? How'd you manage to get into debt like this? I've had a bad patch. A bad patch? 185 quid? I borrowed this for you. I've not been working. I haven't felt too good. But where'd you go? I mean, you've been out all day. Where have you been? Pictures. Well, I couldn't... And we owe 185 pound. So it says here. Mount's up, didn't it? You didn't collect that, did you? No. Why didn't you... tell me? Everybody borrows some time. Not from money lenders like Sid Kipax, they don't. Well, where else can I go? Why did you have to go anywhere? Well, the job was getting on top of me, like, you know. And when those that I'd done didn't pay up, I, I couldn't find out scheming for you. I mean, you'd have gone spare if I'd given you an out, wouldn't you? Do you mean... you were frightened of me? Well, it do go on a bit sometimes, don't you? Yeah, well, how did it get on top of you exactly? 
Well, what it, happened? It was my ladders, you see. I was scared of falling off them, you know. I was all right down below, downstairs, like. I'll be all right again up the ladders when it gets a bit warmer. So it, it's so flipping cold, you know. You better stay where you are today, then. Don't look too clever. No, I know a couple of shops. I, I don't mind the steps. It's the ladders, you know. No. No, you stay where you are, Chuck. I wish you'd have told me. What are you doing? Preparing the toaster. Why? What's wrong with it? Well, it won't shoot up probably when the toast's done, you know. It was Christmas when I told you that. Oh, I thought well, I got a bit of spare time. Stanley, yeah. I chucked that broken toaster in the bin first week in January. This is a new one after second hand stall in the market. You mean the wrong one? There's no wrong with it. Oh. Oh, well, I'll soon get it back together again. I thought it was a different one, you see. Oh, Stan, what are we gonna do? We'll manage. How? Now, just tell me how. We haven't even got no policies left to surrender. How the heck can you save for a rainy day when it tipples down six times a week? We owe Kipax 185 quid, Stan. Yeah. I'll be all right on the inside, you know. Oh, no, it's time you packed up work altogether. Most men have at your age. Not that I get out. I mean, they give me no dole and no redundancy or anything like that. I reckon I get about 15 quid a week on supplementary benefit. Well, I don't understand it. I don't, honest. It's not as though we don't work hard. I'm sure I wasn't born for this. Neither were you, Chuck. Well, we've got to do something, Stan. Short of selling the roof over us heads, and it might just come to that. Hello, we're coming in. Oh, cheer up. No point making everybody miserable. No. Oh. Right, get the glasses out, Stanley. You shouldn't oh. have done that. Oh, all right, I'll take them back then. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. And here's something else. There's 50 quid. Take it round to Sid Kipax first thing in the morning. Tell him you'll have the rest of it tomorrow afternoon. I'll get it for you. But how do we pay you back? I'm not lending him the money, Hilda. And I'm certainly not giving it him. I'm making him an offer he's too poor to refuse. That's for the wind around. Well, for the goodwill. Yeah, go on, the goodwill. I'm buying your business off you, Stanley. Lock, stock and ladders. As from tomorrow, I'm the boss. You're working with me. We'll sort out the details in the morning. All I want to know now is that you agree to it in principle. Do you mean it? Ilse, I don't put 50 quid down and not mean it. Hey, I hope you pay off a bit better than my last financial bent, yeah? I'll second that. <laughs> Agreed. Right. Ah, well. You'll not be sorry to leave the ranks of the self-employed, will you, Chuck? No. You've heard what they say? A man's worst boss is himself. I have heard what they say, Ilse, and it's a load of old cods, Wallop. I'll tell you what, I'll be a lot harder on him than he was on himself. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Money was always tight, but in 1983, Hilda inherited £1,500. Stan and she had different ideas about how to spend it. Hilda, of course, wanted to impress. Well, the best costs money, Stan, and this is the best. We could go to the Chinese, you know, and uh, the change would keep me in beer for a month. Yes, certainly we could, Stan. Or we could go nowhere and I could buy myself a new dress. Only we're not. We're going to treat ourselves to something special just for once. And if you spoil it for me, I shall pack my things, walk out, and you'll never see me again. So think on. I thought you were getting a new bathroom suite, and curtains, and carpets, and things. Ah, well, that was before we heard about all them debts of our arches. Now we'll have to cut us cloth according to us purse. I'm having new carpet in here, though. Oh, aye. I'm having new carpet in here if it's the last thing I do. The rest can stop in the bank. I was, um, <coughs> having a frame uh, of snooker with, uh, Arthur Simmons, last week. Oh, aye. He was telling me that him and his wife, like, you know, they have uh, what they call a joint account. They can both throw out of it, you know. <laughs> have you heard of it? Yes, I have, Stan. Mm. There's all sorts of accounts you can have. There's all sorts of husbands and all. 
There's them what earn good money and never tell their wives how much. Just give them a couple of quid and expect to be kept in luxury. Then there's them that never earn much worth talking about and send their wives out to work. And on the other hand, there's fellas like Arthur Simmons. Works hard for his brass and doesn't mind his wife sharing it with him. There's your shirt. Now, you just sit quiet for a minute or two, get your thinking cap on and work out where you stand. Hello, hello. What are we here? Good evening, madam. No, it's not Halloween, is it? No. Good evening, Mrs. Ogden. An aperitif? Oh, well, it is the accepted thing, isn't it? Yes, I'll have a medium sherry, please. And a Montelado, please, Fred. And uh, a pint of bitter? Yeah, why not? Some folks can't be educated. A Montelado? Bonsoir, Monsieur Dame. Oh. Do you follow me? Yes. Good night, thank you. Good night, sir. Good night. Voilà, madame. Yeah. Voilà. Monsieur. It's a lovely place, Stan. We should have stayed in that bar when we came in. We had a drink while we were waiting. Well, Mrs. Lather says you don't have to. It's quite permissive to go straight to your table. On your own. I don't want you k lad before you get to your soup. Oh, we're having soup, are we? No, we're not having soup. I haven't come all this way just for soup. I mean, you start. And before you start shouting the odds, this is a once in a lifetime. You spoil it for me and I'll strangle you. Good evening, sir. Madam, would you care for a drink while you decide? Mm. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll have an... an a, a, a Montelado. Certainly, madam. And, sir? Don't speak of any beer. Oh, yes, sir. We have draught bitter, mild, lager. Oh, I'll have a bitter. Kind of bitter. Please. Uh, please. One pint of bitter on a Montenegro. Thank you. Hey, that's so, isn't it? <laughs> you just concentrate on what you're going to eat. Oh, you're not uh, on one of your pub bottles. Yeah. Hey, it's all in the fun. Yeah, well, they are, aren't they? Any road, dear. Mrs. Lather put me wise on one or two things. Er, uh, now, Moonia, what's there? That means it's cooked in butter. And, er, uh, Provencale, that means it's got garlic in it. What's got garlic in? Will you stop showing me up? Mm -mm. I must say, it all looks very nice. I can't make any a tale of this. Well, look as though you can. Oh, that was another thing Mrs. Lowe said. Never be afraid to ask. Are you ready to order, madame? Oh, well, uh, yes, thank you. Except, um, well, could you help me, please? Certainly, madame. Uh, what is that, exactly? Al Bordelignon Couture. Yes, madame, this is a sea bass filled with a prawn mousse and baked in a puff pastry casing. It is served with a tarragon and tomato sauce and a fondue of cucumber and tomatoes. Fresh, is it? Yes, sir. Oh, that sounds very nice. Yes, we'll have that, please. You like fish, don't you, Stan? Ah, excellent. Le bar de lignon croûte for two. And to begin with, May I recommend au jambes melon with kiwi fruit and melon liqueur? Oh, yes, that sounds lovely. Uh, for two, please. Thank you. And vegetables with the main course? A bouquetier for two? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. It's a pleasure, madam. <laughs> well, they say, bouquetier. Just let them get on with it, Stan. They know what they're doing. Hey, they slipped up with your glass, haven't they? Oh, it's not big stand. Just a bit of dried sugar around the rim. Not doing me no harm. It should have been worse in the first place. Well, maybe so, but it's not worth making a fuss about. They've all been very nice. Would you care for more coffee, madame? Monsieur? Oh, uh, no, thank you. Uh, but we'll have the bill, if you don't mind. Oh, and uh, would you add 10% for service, please? Thank you very much indeed, madame. 10%? 
that's what Mrs. Lather says is right and proper, so that's what we're going to have. Not blotting our copy books now. We've made a very good impression. So we should. We're as good as they are. Well, our money is, any it? We are. I wouldn't swap you for any of that, look. What's up? Nothing, Chuck. I hear you. Can't see her at the next table letting him run round in his vest and underpants, can you? <laughs> Can't see him quite the chippy either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it has been a lovely evening. Yeah. I've enjoyed it. Thanks. Despite all their difficulties, Stan and Hilda had a deep love and respect for each other. You only had to scratch the surface and it shone through. I'll leave you now with a clip that says it all. Stan. What? In your opinion, what do the folk round here think about us? You and me, like? What? I just wondered. Uh, well, I think they think we're sort of uh, dropping short of a shilling, you know. <laughs> well, me, any road. Yeah. Well, I can't live with us. Why well, can't flipping sleep? You don't suppose we might have brought it on ourselves? Oh. Well, you know where we act. Where we go on sometimes. Well, I thought they liked. I thought we were popular. Yeah, seems we're not. No. I suppose it's too late to change now. Be different. Oh, well, I've tried. Ah, oh, have you, Chuck? I didn't know. Well, not lately, you know, when I, <laughs> when I was younger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you've got a chance then, haven't you? Still, we've got, uh, we've got one thing in our favour, haven't we? What? There's two of us. Yeah. Yeah, it's a comfort, is that, love? Uh, yeah, I love that job at the railways, you know. Be like working in flipping heaven, wouldn't it? Yeah, I know, love. Hey! I know what we'll do. What? We'll give ourselves a tonic. Oh. By having an ambition in life, that's out. We've always been a bit short on ambition, you know, Stan. What sort of ambition? We'll have us own pub. Hey, that'd be smashing. Nobody'd laugh at us then. No, we'd be doing the laughing then, wouldn't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> now then, what do you fancy for your tea? What do you got? Cow eel. Smashing. Right. Ah, oh, you know, you've got a lovely smile, Chuck. Oh, get over. No, honest. It's contagious. Hmm. <laughs>